I'm Sky, and in this video, I'll be teaching you how to do this cool time-lapse effect called Hyperzoom that looks just like this. This technique is really freaking cool, and what's even better is that it's actually not that complicated to pull off. Really quick, I just want to cite my sources before I explain how to do a Hyperzoom. I discovered this technique from watching Rob Whitworth's videos, and if you don't know who Rob is, check out his work. He's a creative wizard who really just took like the time-lapse technique and made it his own. His videos are actually what inspired me to shoot like this in the first place, and his Vimeo account is filled with the coolest videos ever. And Whitworth uses this on a regular basis like a total G, but I believe the term comes from a fellow time lapser, Jeff Tompkinson, who also uses this technique almost exclusively, and I'm always impressed by how seamless and creative his edits are. Enough history, just wanna give credit where credit's due. So to do a hyper zoom, we're gonna be thinking about the ingredients, and the ingredients that we're gonna need are two different time lapses. And that's exactly what we got today. We got one time lapse of the Brooklyn Bridge taken at approximately 20 millimeters, and then a 300 millimeter tight shot of one of the buildings that you can see. And that's really important that you should be able to see what you're zooming into or out of from the wide shot. So I'm lucky that I have two cameras and two tripods, so I can do both time lapses at the same time. But if you only have one camera body, you can still do this technique and follow along. Just make sure that you take one time lapse for 240 photos, switch lenses or switch your focal lengths, and then take another 240 photos from your different focal length. All right, so we know what the ingredients are. Now let's talk about like kind of how we're gonna prepare them. I'm gonna take both time lapses at a four second interval. So make sure that even if you only have one lens that you still have the same interval. You, you still want like a similar time to be moving. I like to take at least 240 photos. That gives me up 10 seconds. And then I have a lot of wiggle room to do my zoom in. And once you've shot both of your time lapses, it's time to bring them in After Effects. So let's hop into After Effects and take a look. So we're gonna come into our footage. So I'm gonna grab my wide shot and my tight shot and I'm just gonna bring them into a new project. And now I'm just gonna stack these on top of each other. I'm gonna stack my tight shot on, on the top. I'm looking at this clip, it looks like the rotation's a little off. It's definitely not the right size and it's not in the right position. So I wanna press S for scale, hold down the shift button, press R for rotation and P for position. And now I'm just gonna start scaling this down. So I'm pressing shift and the down arrow and just scaling it and then I'm gonna grab it and try to position it the best I can. And it looks like it can still go a little bit smaller. Let's see, maybe that's good. And then the rotation looks a little off. We got it pretty close. Now we need to blend it, right? So the next part of the recipe or the next step is to go into our mode, switch the blending mode from normal to difference. And if you don't see mode, just right click and go to columns and you're looking for this mode right here. So now using your mouse, if you use two fingers, you can just zoom in and press the space bar and it gives you this hand tool and you can just move a mouse over without moving anything, which is really handy. So now I want to grab this clip and drag it on top. And what this difference layer is telling me is when it's all black, we have a really good match. Looks pretty good. This isn't quite lining up, so I know I have to adjust my rotation. So it's somewhere around three and you can, you can dial in really small increments, negative 2.9. I'm not so worried about these edges, but if you really wanted to make it like work perfectly, what you could do is go into effect, distort and transform. And that'll give you a lot more flexibility, but that's overkill for this particular one because we shot at such a similar vantage point. I actually, I think it's gonna work. So let's just go to our mode and turn our normal, nice. So now what I wanna do is, I'm eventually gonna wanna animate these. The way I'm gonna do it is I just wanna animate one layer. So I'm going to go down here into the parent and link. And again, if you don't see this, just right click, go to columns and go to parent and link. And I'm going to grab what's called a pick whip tool and I'm gonna drag it to our top layer, our tight shot. So I'm grabbing our wide shot and I'm parenting it to the tight shot. And the reason why I wanna do it with the tight shot is because I'm gonna be working with a parameters between zero and 100. Whereas this eventually is gonna be scaled way above 100. It's gonna be like 400 or even 1000%. And when you're working with these big numbers, it just makes everything so much more time consuming to edit with. So I always recommend using the smaller, the tighter shot. The next part of our recipe is to go ahead and feather. And I'm, I wanna circle ellipse, and I'm going to zoom back in again, and I'm going to start dragging a mask. And what's nice is I'm holding down my, my fingers on the mouse, and if I press the space bar, I can actually move this around any way I want. And now what I wanna do is blend the layer, so I'm gonna press F for feather, 
and I'm gonna dial this up to 500. And already you can see that's a big improvement, but this color doesn't quite match. So the next step is to color correct. So I'm just gonna go in here and in your effects and presets, go to Lumetri Color, drag it on top. And this is where you're gonna have a little bit of trial and error, and it's just gonna be different for each sequence that you shoot. But if I come in here and I maybe adjust my exposure, looks like this is a little bit too yellow, so I'm gonna add a little bit of blue. So see how that looks. Dang, that already looks really good. And sometimes it's hard to tell what to do, so you just kind of have to try some stuff. Okay, so I think we're good. I didn't have to do too much. All right, so now what I wanna do is just resize this composition. So I'm gonna press Command K, and we're working with the 8K clip. So I'm gonna dial it down to 1920 by 1080. Now what I'm gonna do is reposition this frame. Since they're parented, all I have to do is animate this layer. It's really nice. If I press S and Shift for P, I can see my uh, scale and position. I'm just gonna scale this back up to 100 and then just kind of fit it around until I like the frame. I kind of like that, it's a little, I like the symmetry. So I got my position and scale, I'm ready to animate it. So I'm gonna select on both of these keyframes to begin the animation. Maybe I'll go to like five seconds, that should be good. And I'm gonna dial this down to 4.5. I'm just trying to make sure that this fits in the frame. So there we go, just nudge it over a little bit and I'll bring this down till it fits the frame, however I like it. I just wanna make that transition, the scale, a little bit smoother. So I'm gonna to go to my keyframe assistant and go to Easy Ease Out. Do the same thing here, right click, keyframe assistant, Easy Ease In, and then let's go ahead and preview the zoom. And here's the zoom, look at that. We nailed it, guys. That's, that's looking honestly so good. And that's the steps, and that's exactly how we went throughout this whole process for all of this, this video. It's all just using that exact technique. On this part right here, if you if we wanna take a look at it, that's when I actually had to go in and do the transform because the alignment was so weird. And that's pretty much it. That's We nailed it, guys. And so you just keep on repeating that. All right, well, that is how you create a hyperzoom effect. I hope that that helped you unlock a new technique that you can use in your video skills. And I also encourage you to do this instead of using the smooth zoom transition plugin. It's definitely gonna make your work stand out over a sea of smooth zooms that don't have any purpose driving them. And I'm not knocking anyone using the plugin because I've used it many times. I'm just suggesting get a little bit more critical about why behind it. So if you found this video helpful, go ahead and subscribe, sign up for these notifications. If you're interested in time-lapse photography and don't know where to start, I got a great video for you. It's 13 tips for better time lapses, which I think is gonna really help you take your time lapses to the next level. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to build these custom time slice templates that you can use. That's it for this video. Happy shooting, and I'll see you next time.